Dantera already. Firstly, I wish you all a happy Danteras and also in today's uh, happy Diwali. Like every year for Diwali, is a reminder of uh, what we have inside of us, you know. All this light that we lit outside is not just to light a light outside and be happy about it. You know? It reminds you, if you don't light that inner light itself, which is inside of you, life becomes useless. You stay in the darkness of ignorance, which... Uh, Often, people like it. You know, I have heard somebody say, ignorance is bliss, isn't it? You have heard about that, all of you. Yes or no? Eh? But you see, if truly ignorance is bliss, then this world will be a blissful place. <laughs> Everybody will be joyful and happy. No? Why not? But this is the sad reality that everybody, even if they know the truth, they choose to be into that ignorance. They like to be ignorant. Even if you bring the light to them, they will rather choose the darkness than the light. Why? Like I always say, it's easy to make somebody negative and make somebody Positive. To make somebody positive, it takes a long time. First, you have to try to convince that person to become uh, positive. And you have to really embellish that. You have to keep on. You understand? The moment you stop, they drop back again. You have attached yourself so much to your... Ignorance, you have attached so much to your negativity, but you have become, you have made that negativity part of yourself. When we are lighting this lamp, we are asking God, lead us from darkness to light. But God will not lead you if you don't want to walk from the darkness into light. Do you think He would drag you like an animal and bring you to the light? This is completely. Absurd. When people think that, yes, God will drag you like an animal who don't want to, you know, you have seen animal which is bringing to the slaughterhouse, no? They have to drag the animal. Do you think God will do that for you? That, but that's what people want. They want that God will do everything for them. They don't need to do anything. They want to shine like an angel without doing anything. This light is a reminder of your dharma also to move forward with your life. Life is the most precious things which God has given you. But if you don't make any effort to transform that light, you will still be in darkness. That's why the Rishi said, no, asatoma asagamaya. So you want to be in the darkness, then be in the darkness. Life after life, you will be reminded to be into the light. And how to be into that light? Knowledge is important. Yeah. Knowledge, I'm not talking about book knowledge. You can read books like novels if you want. That would not bring anything. The right understanding is very important. Mahalakshmi, that today we are celebrating Danteras. You have heard the, the story. Danteras in India very often is associated with Dhan. You know, Dhan means wealth. Here, you see two kinds of wealth. Danvantri is also Dhan. No? The Lord of Medicine. The Lord who brings life itself. No? Danvantri. But yet, people choose another dhan, which is material dhan. So, here you see, both is called dhan. And both is celebrated today. You celebrate the appearance of Danvantri, Lord of Medicine, 
And you so celebrate Dan Teres, which is Kubair, which is associated with Kubair. He give you a choice. Which one you prefer? Which is the most important thing for you? Your health or your wealth? Both is wealth. But health, once you lose it, you may have billions. It's very difficult. I was talking to some devotee. His mom is not well right now. His mom is very sick. They are very fearful rich people. But in spite of that, his money, their money can't help them. Then Bentley remind you also of that health wise, well, that you have to start caring. The one have given you this body, not waiting. Only when you get old, you are feeling sick. You can't handle your life, then you will start looking after your health. No, I said, no, be aware of that. If you want to reach from to do your dharma first, see what you have come here for, to reach to the aim that you have uh, put into your life, it's very important to start looking after your health also. A healthy mind, meaning a healthy body. A healthy body means healthy also on your spiritual path. But if your mind is not healthy itself, do you think you will be able to enjoy your spirituality? Do you think you will be able to enjoy doing your sadhana? No, you will not enjoy anything. Even if you want to do it, you will not. So here it is, it will mind, but that mind must transform first. When we look at the story, I don't know which story, uh, we are celebrating Danteras. This is a very beautiful story which is uh, associated to Danteras. It's a story of uh, once uh, Mahalakshmi said to Narayana, when you go and visit your devotee, I would like to come also. So with due convincing, Narayana said, okay, fine, I will take you. But with one condition, you should not look towards the south. You see, in the Hindu tradition, south means the direction of Yamaraj. No? So, they, you should not. Because if you are going to my devotee's house, you have to bring good luck to them. You have to bring prosperity to them, blessing to them. So, but don't look at the south. But you see, when you tell a Mataji not to do something, anybody, I'm not saying only a Mataji, the curiosity inside is more stronger. Nah? If you tell somebody not to do something, why should I not do that? Nah? So, Mahalakshmi was tempted. And she symbolized Prakriti Shakti. Nah? So, nature is her creation. So, she was tempted because she's still you know, very much attached to this world. So she was tempted to look. So she turned and looked toward the west, uh, to the, towards the south. As she looked, Narayana became sad about it and said, well, I pro you promised me you will not look to the south. Now, because you have not kept your promise, for 12 years, you will have to be as a human being, be in this world itself for 12 years, human years, of course. Yeah. Mahalakshmi tried to convince him, but not possible. So, Mahalakshmi changed her appearance. She came and she lived. She came to a farmer. And in that farm, farmer, the moment she entered the house of the farmer, everything became so bright. Everything became, I mean, bright meaning where Mahalakshmi is, wealth is present. You know? Everything come, abundance come. So such abundance came into 
that farmer's house. For 12 years, he was very happy and joyful. After 12 years, Shimanarayana came back in disguise of an old Brahmin. Tried to has a, get Mahalakshmi back. The farmer opposed. Said, no, you can't take her away. Since she came, she had been lucky for me. And there was a big discussion between the two. I said, no, she had to leave. Finally, they had to reveal their true nature, who they are. So they, they, they show, uh, she took her real appearance of Mahalakshmi. And uh, of course, Brahman became Narayana. So the farmer was very delighted to have Lakshmi Narayana. But he understood. But he was very sad. So Mahalakshmi promised him, but once a year, before Diwali, two days before Diwali, I will come to you. So like that, every year, he waited. He cleaned the house and he waited for Mahalakshmi to come. No? So here you have to understand, you know, in, in India, also in Mauritius, normally what we do, we, before Diwali, we clean everywhere. I don't know, in India also they do like that, no? They clean the whole house and for Diwali, everything is clean and nice, you know, waiting for Mahalakshmi to come. But actually, you see, if you clean just the outside, but you don't clean the inside, where would Mahalakshmi shine? Eh? Mahalakshmi doesn't just come on the outside. First, you have to clean your heart you know, from all your negative quality. And nobody will come behind you, you know, to tell you, oh, you have this negativity, you have that, you have to clean this. And you know yourself what you have to clean. Most of the people think that they are super pure, especially spiritual people. You know, they think that they are heavenly gifted uh, beings, which uh, they don't need to do anything. This is not true. So first, you know, that cleansing of oneself is very important. And you clean not with water or this, you clean with your effort of transforming your own negativity into positivity. Yeah. Some will say, yes, I have been trying very hard, but yet I can't. But this is laziness. Now again, if you are so attached to your negativity, it's very difficult to let go of it. No? Anything which you attach yourself to, it becomes very difficult to let go. And this is also another kind of greediness which uh, you hold upon, which you don't want to let go. When you know, yes, sooner or later you will have to transform that, you have to let go of that. But because it is so dear, you find it difficult. The same as the farmer have attached himself to everything else on the outside, but yet inside, the transformation of happen. So, it's not only to light the lamp of the outside, but light the lamp of knowledge, light the lamp of love, light the lamp of compassion and all the good quality, the divine quality which God have graced you with. Light this lamp inside of your heart and let it shine. You know, like in the Bible, I think it is a beautiful verse that said, when you have a light, you don't hide it under the bed, no? Or somewhere. You put it higher up, let it shine, you know? So the same, you know? When you have that light of knowledge inside of you, you have to let it shine. Which means you don't shine that lamp for yourself. A, light, a lamp don't light its own light for, them, for itself. Have you ever seen a light that, yes, I'm lighting myself for me? Huh? No. The light, you know, the lamp, the light of the lamp is for enlightening of others. But first, that inner light must shine. You know? 
if that inner light of knowledge doesn't shine for you, you can't help somebody else. Many people try, you know, to help somebody else because this helping is a nature of human, you know, to help someone. But in the spiritual path, what I have noticed very often is that everybody wants to be a mini guru to others. Have you ever noticed that? Eh? Probably there is many of you inside also, you know, who will pretend to be a little guru, try to guide others. But you yourself are drowning. You can't even save yourself. You will save somebody else. That is a danger. That's why you have to educate yourself. You have education that means again, not just reading a book. Yes, I have read this book. Now I'm very knowledgeable and I know everything. <laughs> no, you have to have that experience. You have to have that when we are talking about that love, when we're talking about the experience of the divine himself. Allowed him to manifest for you. Allowed him to make you an instrument. And in that, uh, you see, it's not just to say, yes, we are very peaceful people. We are very nice people. We are very, I say, humble people. No. And yet you are not yourself. This is the mental Sickness. Uh -huh. But one wants you to be who you are in essence, uh, not just the polish or not on the, on the surface, but who you are from the deepness of your being. Uh -huh. When Mahalakshmi is sitting, you know, there's this beautiful verse that says, you know, Mahalakshmi is sitting at the feet of, of Sriman Narayana, you know, massaging, massaging. Massaging the feet of Shriman Narayana. There's a few days ago I was reading a verse from Shandilya Bhakti Sutra, which said, a cow, when it, uh, when, for, for a cow to drink his, her own milk is very bad. It is poison. No? If she will feel sick. But if, that milk is transformed into curd and mixed with black pepper and given to the cow that that curd with the black pepper is the medicine for the cow. So somebody asked me, Samji, what does that mean really, you know, because it's a bit strange verse actually, you know. Actually, what this means, you see, the depository of grace, which is inside of you, you know, it is eternal. It is always there. There, was, there is not a single moment that God is not with you. Because that parcel, which we call the Atma, it is Him. At the end, it is only Him that stays. There is nothing else. All the, all the delusion that we call reality for, uh, uh, of the mind, it's just a delusion. But within that delusion, there's one reality. That is the Lord prevail over everything. So, you see, if you just sit idly, not doing anything, thinking that you're too great, that becomes poison for your mind. In spite of having the divinity inside, but how many people do have, everybody have that divinity inside, but how many really realize that divinity? How many really realize that love, that grace which they hold inside of them? The grace of human being itself. How many? Very few. That's why it stayed dormant. But when that milk is transformed into curd, which means through your sadhana, through your effort, through your, your willingness, your longing, that transformation 
happen. And when that transformation happened, you brought that grace from inside out. So I was saying that, then there's this beautiful analogy to it, which is, when we look at Mahalakshmi, she's sitting at the feet of Shrimanarayana. And she's pressing. No, you have seen that, no? And we said always, this is the, the, the symbol of servitude, which uh, she represents, she's serving the Supreme Lord himself. And by pressing his feet. Actually, there's a beautiful secret into that. Because Sri Narayana, it is the fullness of bliss. So bliss don't just come out like that. Bliss manifests itself when there is an effort from the bhakta. Without an effort from the bhakta, that bliss doesn't manifest itself. So what allowed that bliss to manifest, what allowed that bliss to come out, is that effort. When she's massaging the feet of Sriman Narayana, she's actually pressing the bliss out of his feet. Just like a mother, you know, you know, mother will have breast milk only when they have a child. No? The moment she's pregnant, that milk will be formed uh, for the nourishment of the child. So without that, there is no milk. I don't know. Probably there is. I have no idea about it. But I guess well, that's what science said. No? <laughs> Just uh, like a cow. For the cow to have milk, they have to have calf. No? The cow have to be pregnant. So I guess the same. You see, a human being is also an animal. So, but sometimes, you see, I have seen that with my auntie or this, you know, but they want to feed the child. They have the milk. The child is crying. The mother wants to feed, but the milk don't come out. They block. So what the mother does, they massage the breast. Huh? So, but the milk, which is blocking, because sometimes it coagulated or whatever, then it blocks. So, it can push and allow the milk to flow. So, the same thing Mahalakshmi is doing with the feet of Shrimanarayana. It's pressing the feet of Shrimanarayana so that the bliss can pour out. Uh, so, that what one have to do you see? that uh, instant, that that that, that uh, effort of pressing the feet of shrimanada and the, the effort that you put in your sadhana you know and you allow that transformation to happen into your life you know? that what will lit that lamp of Diwali inside of you so i wish you all blessed and happy Diwali to all of you Thank you.